hi everybody good day to you welcome back if this is your first time here just welcome i'm glad you're here i know i'm glad to be here okay what we've got here is a 2009 lincoln mkx and customer states they were driving uh, they saw a bunch of smoke come out from under the hood and the power steering stopped working and yeah it has no power steering so let's swing this bad boy around and get it into the shop popping the hood and uh, see what's going on with the steering system on this vehicle i speculate that a line has ruptured and uh, all the fluid was being sprayed onto something hot causing the smoking condition Whoa. That doesn't sound good at all. And caption. There we go. That's my spot. It's powering down. <sighs> Wow, who thought lifting up a car could be so interesting? Okay, eyeball in the undercarriage. We see a lot of stuff leaking down. Uh, that looks like AC water. But there's definitely petroleum product here. You can see how the water is kind of beating off everything. So there is something up there leaking. Based on the noise, I'm assuming it's power steering. Uh, what we don't have leaking is the power steering rack, so it's got to be the pump or something else from up above. Okay, there, yeah, there's the pump. That looks pretty dry. Let's get a little closer. Yeah, no leak from the pump. There's got to be something above that. Let's let it back down and take a look. Gaining access to engine compartment now. There we go. Well, there's their problem right there. Fixed it. Okay, first things first, let's check the fluid level here. Yeah. See what we got. All right, it's pretty low and kind of foamy. Let's see if there's any, any leakages going on. Uh, nothing that I see so far. Okay, let's start this engine again and see if we cannot find a leak. Oh, climbing back in. Uh oh, the seat's moving. It's trying to smash me. Not cool. Let me get out of here. Okay, let's take a look at the pump. I hear it down there somewhere. Ooh, what do we have here? Look at that. Yep, there it is right there. That's the uh, pressure sensor on the high side line. Okay, I found something going on. There's fluid all over that. Let's shut this down again. Okay, I think we're on to something. There's some fluid all over the intake right here. I see some back on top of the uh, ignition coils. And, this is interesting, look at there. The weather pack seal has been pushed out of the connector. Yep, there's fluid right there inside of this pressure switch. It was leaking through and being pushed into the connector. All right, so this pressure switch right here has failed. I speculate that the fluid's been leaking out of that and dripping onto the exhaust, and that was the cause of the smoke that they complained about. So let's see if I can uh, source one of these guys. We'll change this out and then uh, clean everything back off. We'll reevaluate the system at that point and uh, see if we have any additional leaks. Sweet, this one's pretty easy. Alrighty, I have ordered and received a replacement pressure sensor. Now, we can see here that the, uh, the area for my tool to contact is located below the sensor. And looking at this sensor that's installed in the car, I can't really get a wrench 
behind that move. I can't get a wrench behind that really to, um, to unthread this. So I'm gonna have to create some uh, a tool of some sort to uh, to reach in there. I, I, I got an idea. I think I'll use a crow's foot wrench, uh, but I've got to get a hold of this hexed area right here on that sensor in order to break it free and uh, and unthread it from the line. So let's see what I can come up with. Yeah, I've got some short wrenches, but I don't know if those are really gonna fit. And that one's short. That one's a shorty. I really don't know if I can get in there with that. I think the best bet is gonna be a crow's foot wrench and then maybe an extension coming out of it so I can kind of reach under and behind and then break it free. I think I'll go with this one. So, let's see. Extension, extension, what do I got here? It's a kind of a long one, but we'll see. Yeah, that might work. Let's go with that. Actually, that, that can stay here for now. Sure. Let's see what we can do about this. Okay, what I'm thinking is if I can reach behind this and then apply some reverse clicks to it, it should unthread. Let's try that. Right, we'll put an extension on the extension so I can reach past the camera. That might do it. Okay, here goes nothing. Yep. Oh, it did go. Sweet. Well, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. I figured I was going to end up uh, twisting the line and having to pull this line out to remove this thing. Well, that's good. Okay. Hmm. Fatal flaw. This new one didn't come with an O-ring. Look at that. We'll have to find one. Fortunately, we have master kits for such things because I, I can't really reuse this o-ring. It's all flat and smashed and, and worn out, so I don't want to reuse that. Okay, it's curvy pry bar time. That's ah, yeah, like solutions. It. Okay, so with the use of our curvy pry bar, we'll get this thing off of here. Now I can find a uh, replacement. So I'm thinking this one should do it. Looks pretty good, close enough for me. So I, I also wanted to replace the connector that goes to this. I don't know what that was, but it is unobtainium and does not exist. So I'm gonna have to reuse the connector that's already there and just clean it up some. Okay. Let's go thread this bad boy in and see if it uh, if it's gonna seal up this leak. Well, we're not gonna see anything. It is gonna seal up the leak because the old one was the leak. And I don't need to put any uh, Teflon tape or sealant on the threads because that O-ring is there and the O-ring is sufficient to create a seal. go all right let's go back in apply some torque action to this and click now I want to get all the old oil off of this connector as much as possible and out of that connector I'm probably not going to be able to get all of it cleaned out but as much as I can Okay, let's try it off with my OSHA approved air gun. Because safety. And we'll plug her back in. You will plug back in. Yeah, OSHA says that this is okay for commercial use because it has like a bunch of little holes around the cone instead of one big hole in the center. And I don't really see how that makes this a safe 
blowgun, but um, that's what they said is okay. So that's that's what they sell now. Perhaps the nature of that design prevents me from launching projectiles out of the blowgun. Who knows? Anyway, we need power steering fluid. I'll take that. And let's refill this uh, this reservoir here. And we'll start this engine, let it run, and we will see if that uh, whiny noise shuts up or if pump damage has occurred. Okay, time for pouring things. Oh, I already ruined it, I spilled. It's good, okay. Time for starting the engine. Okay, it slurped all that up. We need a little bit more in there. Yeah, it's, it sucked that up pretty quick. More pouring things. Right about there, that's cool. Okay, let's initiate some steering wheel turning action here to uh, purge any air out of the system that may still be in the lines or in the steering gear. And we'll do that just by going lock to lock two or three times. Hmm, the steering column makes a squeaky noise. All right, let's go check the level again. Okay, survey says it's still full, a little bit foamy. I'm gonna let this thing hang out for 10, 15 minutes, just let it run. All those bubbles will dissipate and we'll be left with a uh, nice clean bubble-free fluid. Then we'll go out on the ROAD for a test drive. Okay, let's bring this thing over to the car wash station and get rid of all that residual uh, fluid that leaked out. All right, backing out the auto. Beep alarm. Begin engine washing procedure now. I know, you can't do that, ruin the engine. Alrighty, that's gonna take care of the majority of that leaked out fluid. And while we're here, I'll knock all the dust off of it. That way it's nice and shiny for the next guy. Go out for a little bit of a ride real quick put the steering system through its paces and i can recheck level and release this to my consumer i'd like to thank you guys for watching regardless of how short this video may have ended up i hope you like this video if you did like this video please let me know about it open that like button down below drop me a comment while you're down there i would appreciate that and so would the youtube algorithm your likes and comments are what lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job here. And if YouTube thinks that I'm doing a good job, it's far more likely to recommend my content to other potential viewers. That's good for me, that's also good for them. So that being said, again, as always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, before I go, I have to remind myself to remind you guys to not forget to have a great day. So, everybody here, don't forget, have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. So I'm not seeing any smoke rising from the hood as they had complained. I'm assuming that since the uh, petroleum slash hydraulic fluid leak has been buttoned up that uh, that was the cause of it. But like I said, I'll drive this thing around for a little while, get everything up to operating temperature and just verify that there is in fact no smoke. All right, let's pop in the hood one more time. Okay. 
Alrighty, all the bubbles are gone, fluid level is stabilized and at the maximum mark. I'll wipe that down a little bit and uh, we're good to go here. See you guys later. Thanks for watching. See you later, Lincoln.